Welcome back to online Sunday school at the Schleniger's house. It's, it seems like it's been a long time again since we've simply done a Sunday school video. And it's only been a week. Okay, we are continuing in our book of Acts. It's the book after the Gospels, so after the life of Jesus. And it tells about what the people did after they knew about Jesus and after the Holy Spirit came to them and how they started spreading the news about Jesus all over the world. Okay, Luke, would you like to light our candle? Oh, yeah. Okay, that reminds us that Jesus is alive and here with us. There we go. Can you see? I'm pretty sure. Okay, let's pray. Can you pray with me? Dear Lord, thank you for the words that you give us in the Bible. Thank you for the inspiring stories from the book of Acts. Mm -hmm. Open our ears to hear this story and open our hearts to listen to your words for us. In Jesus' name, mm -hmm. amen. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, lately, past week or two, Luke and Colin have been playing with a certain kind of toy, huh? What have you guys been um, totally intrigued um, by? They call them transformers. What does a transformer do? I'm saying, see this, this truck. Um, it it transforms into a mech. A see, mech. See here's a robot. The, yeah. Okay. And see Show they, us and see the toes just fold down. Okay. And then he stands up like this. Uh huh. And his arms can come out. Uh huh. And they. Oh, I see his fists right there. Yeah, his yeah. fists. Cool. And then that folds down. Uh huh. And can you guess where his head comes from? Where is his head? Oh, it's in there. It's it. It's in here. Oh. Oh, we turn it around. Okay. See? Cool. There's his head. And, and, right. and. Yeah. Okay. Oh, there's his legs. All right, cool. And these pull apart like that. Okay, now he can walk. And there's supposed to be a sword. That's okay. That's okay. That's... Don't worry too much. So, Luke's truck has gone through a transformation. What is a transformation? Um, when, when something goes from one thing, when it turns from one thing to another. Yeah, it transforms into something different. All right, you can put your transformer down. I'm going to transform him. Uh, why don't you just put him down? Thank you very much. Okay, you can transform him later, okay? Okay. Our story today in the Bible is mm -hmm. about a guy who experiences a significant transformation. Okay. He's a very important guy in the story of the early church. Okay. His name is Saul in our story. Later, he becomes known by his Greek name, which is Paul. Have you heard of Paul in the Bible? I've heard of Paul, Paul Bunyan. Do you think this is Paul Bunyan? Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. Okay. This guy is a guy from the Bible. His name was Paul the Apostle. Okay. Yeah. Not King and Saul? No, not King Saul. That's confusing. Okay? Mm -hmm. Here. King Saul was back here in the Old Testament part of the Bible, right about here. Okay? Yeah. And he was, he was the first king of the Israelites because the Israelites asked God, we want a king like all the other people. Okay? That was King Saul. Okay? But Saul was a popular name with the Israelite people, with the Jewish people. So later in the Bible, check it out. Over here, whoops, that's Matthew. A little further, John, Acts. We get to another guy named Saul, who's probably named after that first king of Israel back there. Okay, but this is a different Saul. Okay, there are at least two Sauls in the Bible that I know of. Okay, maybe more because it was a popular Jewish name. Do we know his last name? Um, Saul of Tarsus. Okay, he was born, he, he, in those days they often used the last name from the town where you were born. And he was born in a town called Tarsus. Okay? 
Wait, it's Tarsus? So, yep. Like tar? No. A little different. Okay? Alright, so here's some pictures to look at. I'm going to actually ask you to hold that. Okay? Mm -hmm. The story that we're going to be reading today comes from the book of Acts chapter 9, verses 1 through 19. Okay? And this is a surprise, unexpected thing that happened to this guy Saul. Okay? When someone says something unexpected, we are surprised. Sometimes, we are surprised by the way people act. Listen for surprises about Saul and Ananias. Okay? Check this out. Whoops. You went too far. Let's go back. Okay? Come on. There we go. So Saul was this guy. And he was certain that Jesus' friends were telling lies. He did not believe that Jesus was God's son. What? Saul wanted to make people stop talking about Jesus. Saul was so angry that he even wanted to hurt people who believed in Jesus. He would throw them in prison. Okay? Why? We talked about it a little bit last week with Philip, that the Christians were having to leave Jerusalem. Okay, This is part of the problem. This guy, Saul, was persecuting Christians. Okay, He was... He was getting them in trouble because they were talking about Jesus, and he wanted it to that's, stop. That's mean. Well, he didn't think it was mean. He thought they were breaking God's law by talking about some guy who was the son of God who couldn't possibly be the son of God. He was the son of a carpenter born in a stable. He wasn't the king, okay? Sometimes, but sometimes God's plans are not what we think. Saul was not ready to hear that message yet. Okay? Yeah. He was convinced that the story about Jesus being the king of the Jews was wrong. And he yeah. wanted people to stop because he thought it was hurting God. It was like blasphemy, like talking badly about God, like saying God's name in vain. Okay? And he thought it was bad. Okay? So bad, in fact, that he asked the high priest for a letter so that he could go and hunt down the believers and bring them back to Jerusalem to be arrested. Okay? He knew a lot of them had gone to a city called Damascus. That is where Saul and the men with him were going. Okay? But God had a surprise for Saul on the road dun, dun, dun. to Damascus. Okay? So, while the travelers were coming close to Damascus, a bright light from the sky circled Saul. It was so bright that Saul fell down. What? Yeah. Saul, why are you so mean to me? Asked a voice from above. Who are you? Saul asked. I'm Jesus. When you are mean to the people who believe in me, you are being mean to me too. Go to Damascus. I'll tell you what to do when you get there. The men with Saul saw the light and heard the voice. They helped Saul stand up. When Saul opened his eyes, he couldn't see. His eyes were blinded. The people that were with Saul had to lead him to Damascus, hold his hand, and lead him in the right way. There he goes. They're holding his hand, his eyes don't work, and they are leading him into the city of Damascus. Meanwhile, there's another guy in this story. His name was Ananias. Okay? Jesus gave a message to Ananias. Ananias believed in Jesus, and he was living in Damascus. Here's the message. Ananias, Saul is in town. I told him that a man named Ananias would help him. Now, this 
scared Ananias. He said, I know about Saul, Lord. He wants to arrest me and anyone who believes in Jesus. He is dangerous. But Jesus said, it will be fine. I have chosen Saul to do important work for me. He will not be mean to you. How do you think Ananias was feeling about this situation? Maybe kind of scared. Yeah. Go to the home of the guy who's here to arrest all the Christians because I have a plan for him. Okay? Ananias is scared, but does he obey? Okay. Yes, he obeys. Just like Philip obeyed last week, Ananias obeys too. Filled with the Holy Spirit, he obeys. Okay? He went to the house on Street Street where what? Saul was staying. He touched Saul's eyes and said, Brother Saul, Jesus sent me to make you see again. You are now filled with the Holy Spirit. Flakes like fish scales fell from Saul's eyes. He could see. Then they had a nice chat about being filled with the Holy Spirit and Ananias baptized him. <coughs> from that day on, Saul stopped being mean to the people who believed in Jesus. Instead, he told everyone the good news of Jesus. Saul, whose heart had been changed or transformed by Jesus, mm. became better known after that as Paul. Ah. Okay? Same guy. Gotcha. Yeah. Interesting story, huh? Quite a transformation. Now, pretend that you... Oh, first, before you pretend, let's thank God for his story. Word of wisdom, word of grace. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now, pretend that you are Ananias and you are telling your friends about helping Saul. What would you say? Mm. What would you say to your friends? If I'm your friend and you say, I got a vision. Friends, I had a vision. Jesus told me to go see the man, Saul, who's all here to arrest us. What would you say? Yeah. Don't go! It's a trap! Right? What would the friends say? I'm scared for you. I'll pray for you. Take some soldiers to protect you. Did Ananias have any soldiers to take with him? No. He probably didn't have any soldier friends. Okay? Well, let me, um, but, um, I think, didn't he say that God would be with him? Yes, he promised. So he, God is like kind of, kind of this soldier that's protecting him. Oh, God is his soldier. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Okay? So Ananias was brave and he went. Okay? Now, also in the story, the part where Saul gets blinded, have you ever, first off, do you know anybody who can't see? I know someone who, who, well, she's partly blind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Our, our friend Paige. Mm -hmm. Like, things are a little blurry. Mm -hmm. Like, like she can't read. Yeah, it's unless, not blurry. Unless maybe big, fat letters. Big, huge letters. Like, yeah. big, humongously fat letters. Yes. She might be able to read. Yeah. Pretty much. Um, have you ever tried to walk around your house blindfolded or with your eyes closed? It's really hard. It's hard, yeah. I, I, yeah, I, maybe this week. Give it a try, okay? Have somebody cover your eyes and um, walk around the house. Try it by yourself and then try it allowing someone else to guide you around the house, okay? And see how that goes. Being blind. I would have to like have my. There's so much stuff in the house. I know. You'd have to. You have to really trust the person who's guiding you. Okay. Saul 
had to experience this humility of not being able to see in order for him to trust others, okay? He had to learn how to trust God. And he spent three days blind in this house, sitting there. He wouldn't eat. He refused to eat. Why? And I, I think he was fasting, okay, and praying and trying to figure out what was going on in his life. This was such a transformation that he didn't expect. He was on his way to Damascus to arrest those terrible people talking about Jesus. And then Jesus appears to him and says, Saul, why are you hurting my people? By hurting my people, you're hurting me. He's like, no, God, I believe in you. I love you. Then stop hurting me. Okay, that's the idea that, that's going on here. Okay, so Saul stopped being mean to the people who believed in Jesus after Jesus spoke to him. I want you to think, does knowing about Jesus help you be kinder to others than if you didn't know about Jesus? I'm not sure. Yeah? Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard because you don't really know a life without Jesus, huh? Kind of always known about it. Okay? Mm -hmm. But we believe that by having the Holy Spirit and having Jesus' love in our heart, we are better able to be kind and loving to others because we know how much Jesus has loved us and how much grace we have been given, how much we've been forgiven. And just like Saul realized that God forgave him for all of that terrible things he was doing, God forgave him a lot. And Paul says later, when we have been forgiven so much, we are so thankful for all that we have been given. That's that grace and gratitude that we talk about a lot. Okay, We've been forgiven, and so we are more thankful, and then we are reach out and be kind to others and offer others more grace and forgiveness because we know what it feels like to be forgiven. And, and we're happy. Exactly, and we're happy. All right, I have a project to show you, and then we will wrap up, okay? If you look on our on our uh, website, we're going to post a little project where you can cut out Saul's face, okay? And I printed it two-sided. I recommend printing two separate papers. I think it would be easier, okay? Because I found it hard to cut him out because he didn't line up perfectly on both sides, okay? So if you can print it on two side, on two papers, it's better. You have blind Paul, blind Saul, and then Saul who can see, okay? His eyes are like bright green. Yeah, on the paper, well that's because I colored them green, because I wanted them to show up good, right? On the paper where he's blind, it actually shows him without any eyeballs at all, okay? And what I did was I took little pieces of wax paper or parchment paper from my kitchen, and I traced the eyeballs from the side where he can see, and I put these little ones on his eyes here. So he has yeah. eyes, but they're kind of like glazed over, like you can't see very well. And I also thought that these little pieces of wax paper, I'm going to let them fall, reminded me in the story of when it says that something like fish scales fell from his eyes. Have you ever touched a fish? Okay, it's a little scaly. It's got these funny shaped little things on, on them that they use in the water. Okay, and the Bible says it was something like that that fell from his eyes when Ananias touched him. So that's why I used bits of wax paper and traced out little scales to fall from his eyes. Okay, so we, if you print this, we can do it together and talk about the story when we do our Zoom meeting at 2 o'clock on Sunday. Okay, meanwhile, we hope that everyone has had a fun 4th of July, mm -hmm. been safe with uh, the people that you are around. I love going to Caleb's house. Yeah, yeah, we're excited to go to our friend's house. And then I hope that everyone gets good rest. So we'll see you on Sunday, okay? You guys have a fun holiday weekend, and we will see you on Zoom. Peace Bye. be with you. Bye. Bye.